Welcome to the Good Morning Show. We are your hosts, Abigail Wood and Rowan Roach. Welcome to our viewers on Mars Cable Vision, Channel 116, and those joining us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Life TV. Coming up on today's show, Krowski's high school student drones at Alligator Pond, Manchester. Eight-year-old drones in St. Elizabeth. And three members of a family shot dead execution style. More on the Good Morning Show after <laughs> these messages. Welcome back to the Good Morning Show, and here are the live news highlights. The lifeless body of a student of Krosky's High School was found after he developed difficulties in the water at Alligator Pond in Manchester. Christopher Wellington, the captain of the cricket team, has left the school body in mourning after hearing about the incident on Easter Monday. A student of the St. Aloysius Primary School drowned on Monday at a popular vacation spot in Middle Quarters, St. Elizabeth. He has been identified as 8-year-old Raheem Warren of Tivoli Gardens in Kingston. Raheem was at the Bubbling Spring Mineral Bath and after entering the water, his body was later seen at the bottom of the pool. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. Three members of a family were shot dead execution style by gunmen in the community of Belfield, Manchester, late Monday. Reports are that a man, his common-law wife, and her son were killed leaving the community in shock. We can confirm that the victims were found with gunshot wounds to the head. Their identities has not yet been released or any other information surrounding the deaths. That's it for live highlights. We'll now hand over to Abby for the weather report. Let's look at the weather forecast for today. There will be partly sunny conditions in Manchester throughout the day, and in the afternoon it will be partly cloudy, cloudy with light showers spreading across the entire central region. That's it for live weather today. Up next we will have Rowan with sports report. Thank you, Abby. Now for live sports. We start with news on football. In the SNG road surfacing business house football competition, while in the finals, teachers and Jamaica National Bank tied 3-3 and after penalty shootout, Jamaica National won 2-1 and were named the 2019 business house champions. Spectators at James Sports Park were treated to an exciting celebrity match with the likes of Usain Bolt and Bibi Gardner. Here are the highlights. We're here at JSP for the finals of the SNG Business House competition and we're here with the big man himself, Usain Bolt. What do you think about this competition? Well, so far, they've been good, you know. My team, my team came here and uh, they're going to play a game, uh, all-star team. So I'm excited to be here and see what's going on. It's always good to see the community come out and support and do something to just give people energy and a good vibe and to bring the community together. All right, thank you and all the best. Yeah, man, no problem. Well, football is the new entertainment for Mandeville. Be sure to support the Corner League in June and stay tuned. When we get back, Mrs. Vivian Morris-Brown will be on set. Hi, welcome to JPS Support. Today, we'll discuss how JPS restores power supply following a hurricane. After a hurricane, the first priority for the JPS emergency teams is to assess the damage to the system across the various parishes. The company then fixes the damage to its power plants and main transmission lines in order to supply power. Once completed, the first places to receive electricity are essential services such as hospitals, airports, communication systems, water supply facilities, and the morgues. Next is fixing the damage on those main lines 
lines that will restore supply to many persons. Once fixed, attention is given to the smaller lines and then to individual customers who may have isolated problems affecting restoration. JVS coordinates its restoration efforts with agencies such as ODPEM and the NWA who assist with clearing roadways and facilitating access to affected areas. We encourage you to call JPS if power is restored to your neighbor's homes but not to yours. Here with us today is Mrs. Vivian Morris Brown, former parish manager of the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, cultural researcher and folklorist. Welcome to Live TV, Mrs. Brown. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here at long last. Okay. So, Mrs. Brown, are you now retired or retired? Retiring. In other words, I'm putting on new tires. I'm um, looking around and finding capabilities that I have that I used to use, which I wasn't using for a while, and I'm refurbishing them and sharing with the community and finding it really exciting to be able to choose the projects that I really want to um, get involved with. Nice. So, um, can you explain the term to me, folklorist or folklore? Okay, well, the folklorist is an individual who researches um, and records the folklore of the country and the folklore would include your stories, your folk songs, your riddles, your proverbs and not only do we research and record these but we try to share these um, in different creative ways with the community. So I am a very well used storyteller in this country. I go to schools for Jamaica Day, for other events. I'm invited. I'm invited as a, a motivational speaker at graduations. I use our folklore to deliver certain messages that need to be said. Serious messages sound so much more palatable when you present them in the Jamaican idiom, and I use that as much as I can. Nice. You speak with such, with such passion. Do you enjoy doing what you do? Oh my goodness, yes. I, I do enjoy it, and Maybe because I've been doing it for such a very long time, from when I was a child, you know, if they were having an event at my school, I remember as a kindergartner that I was always in the major productions from my school. And I grew up in the JCDC's Festival of the Performing Arts. Um, every year I would have been participating. And when I became a teacher, which I was in one of my lives, um, I also used to prepare students for festival and had great joy in being able to um, to fetch or to carry home the top awards. And I'm not only speaking at the parish level, I'm speaking about at the national level of the Festival of the Performing Arts. So I do it, I enjoy it. I've done it here in Jamaica, around the island. I've done it overseas in the Eastern Caribbean, in the US, in England, and I'm ready to go if you tell me tomorrow morning. Wow, I'm sitting beside a real life star. So, <laughs> can you share with us some of those proverbs? Mm -hmm. That one, one cocoa full basket. Oh, my grandmother always told me that one. It's a very, very regular one. Everybody knows that one. So, you can't even What does that mean? Where, where what does that mean? That life, you know, like Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, success doesn't come overnight. Mm -hmm. You have to place your move, you have to um, add things on top of your foundation, build here a little, as the Bible says, here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, and brick top a brick make house too. You can't just get up and have a house that flies up overnight. <laughs> you have to build, you have to excavate, you have to put in your foundation and add brick on top of brick until you get the kind of construction that you really want. So life is like that. You have to really put your plans in place and make sure that you measure your words, your actions, because they are part of that ultimate construction of life that you're doing for yourself. Inspiration at its best. Can you tell me a little about your achievements? Okay, I, as I said earlier, I have received many, many awards in the JCDC's Festival of the Performing Arts over the years. I've also been awarded a Most Grave Medal for a contribution to literature because um, I've published some work and I am an Ubuntu awardee 
and Ubuntu is a South African word which means I am because we are and it is it is an award that is presented to persons who use their gifts and their skills to help to benefit and to build others. Those are some of the awards I received. I also received some years ago the um, Jamaica Junior, Ch the Junior Chamber International Award for contribution to um, culture in this country. Nice. So I wanted to ask um, how have you helped um, youth so far, but you can't adjust. Mm -hmm. In the classroom, yeah. <laughs> yes, and not, not only was I involved with the students that I taught personally in the classroom, but as a teacher, uh, I would be at the beck and call, and I still am to some great extent, of teachers in schools, teachers who were starting out with this business of training people to perform, and they liked it, they wanted to be able to do it, but they didn't have all of the techniques at their disposal. So I would go to school sometimes. I remember I would go, say on a Sunday morning, to a school, we would be there from Sunday morning until Sunday night, wow. working with these kids, helping them. And for me, it's not just about telling them what to do and, and expecting them to know it. I would have them go over aspects, sentences, lines, over and over and over until they got the nuance just right. So when they belted out on the little theater stage, everybody, including the judges, would have to sit up and pay, pay attention. You know, that, that, that's, my, that's my joy. And it was also my joy when I performed in the festival competition that no judge should have any time to write while I was performing. Wow. They so no nervousness, to... nothing? Yeah, of course. What is a performance without nervousness? I'm sure you feel a little nervous when you're getting in front of the camera. Very much. It's necessary. It is absolutely necessary because the person who is not nervous gives a, an impression to their audiences. I am it. I have it all. But when you're nervous, you utilize that. It shows you have respect for your audience and you utilize that energy, that force to be a more convincing and a more, um, a more appreciated mm -hmm performer at the end of the day. It was a pleasure having you on the Good Morning Show, Miss Viv. As we're about to go for a break, would you share with us a point, please? <laughs> wow. All right, I'm going to give you a little tips of one of Louis Bennett's wow. um, poems, uh, one of my favorites. It's called Walk Boat, and it speaks about the Jamaican capability to be everywhere in the world. <laughs> that, I believe that one. <laughs> Jamaica people walk about, sir. Them get around for true. Any part of where you go, you're bound to meet up one or two. We always glad we meet the country people and by chance, but that night, we had a sad experience in a France. Me wear a new brand pair of boot, go to a theater play. Me reach all right, but coming back, we couldn't find me way. Me get off of the metro. I me walk and walk so tell me foot them start feel tired and the new boots start rebel. They burn me and them squeeze me and them blister up me heel. Me sits, me can't describe the pain and agony me feel. Just like, just like them pep up me foot and tie them with barbed wire and sprinkle them with turtle time and shoot them in the fire. They burned me, burned me, burned me, so me feel like I was going dead. Then all of a sudden, me this hear a voice whisper in my head. Take off the new boat, girl. Look how long you that so far. Move the boat and walk barefoot. Nobody no know you over here. Not a soul will recognize you. This is not for your country. Take off the boat and ease the foot and end the misery. Mr. Brap. Me make up my mind. So me lean against one tree, take off the boat and stand up straight, barefooted and pain free. Lord, the relief was wonderful. Lord, the relief was grand. So I walk on, yearly humming with the new boot in my hand. Ta -ta -ta -ta. But I never walk two foot before I hear a say, <laughs> Hi. Me look wrong. And come face to face with multi multi vibe. Not this Panitonian one with a talking to one from Manchester. 
That girl mouth don't belong to her. She lavish, you see, ma? She looked down for me barefoot them, then here are. Well, Miss Cece, I would, I never believe that I would ever see you come to this. Miss say, I don't come to nothing. I did feel shame, you see. But I just toss my head and walk off with barefooted dignity. But you know, I feel sure, say, by now, for me, good, good name is gone abroad. How me did broke? In a Europe, I have to walk barefoot from Boulevard. Gosh. <laughs> I felt that one. <laughs> I felt that one. Congratulations. That was a good one. You deserve every medal. <laughs> but thank you again, Mrs. Will. We appreciate you. We appreciate people like you. We right. really do. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thanks for staying tuned to the Good Morning Show. And here's Abby with Healthy Life Hacks. Work is underway by the Technical Working Group developing the government's proposed National Eye Health Plan. The group was established in 2017 by Health Minister Dr. Christopher Sufton to provide policy and strategic direction for the prevention of blindness and visual impairments. Here are some simple health tips for your eyes. Have a regular eye test. Know your family health, eye health history. Eat right to protect your eyesight. Wear protective eye gear. Give your eyes rest. Thanks for joining us on today's show. We'll be closing out with the birthday shout outs. Mrs. Vivian Morris Brown, happy belated birthday. Mrs. Freckleton, happy belated birthday. Terry Ann Roach, cameraman Ricky's mom, Yvette. My daddy, personally Rowan Roach, big up daddy. Um, Javanique Darby and Laverne Darby, happy belated birthday to all of you. And everyone else having a birthday today, happy birthday. Remember, Remember to, to hit, hit us up on, on Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, like, like and, and subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel at, at Live TV. Have a good day. <laughs> Hi, welcome to JPS Support. Today, we'll discuss how JPS restores power supply following a hurricane. After a hurricane, the first priority for the JPS emergency teams is to assess the damage to the system across the various parishes. The company then fixes the damage to its power plants and main transmission lines in order to supply power. Once completed, the first places to receive electricity are essential services such as hospitals, airports, communication systems, water supply facilities, and the morgues. Next is fixing the damage on those main lines that will restore supply to many persons. Once fixed, attention is given to the smaller lines and then to individual customers who may have isolated problems affecting restoration. JVS coordinates its restoration efforts with agencies such as ODPEM and the NWA who assist with clearing roadways and facilitating access to affected areas. We encourage you to call JPS if power is restored to your neighbor's homes but not to yours.